fans, I'm back to do my UFC 125 or resolution predictions taking place New Year's Eve night from the MGM Grand. Uh, I'm going to be on pay-per-view. I would suggest that if you are on the fence about ordering this one, I would consider ordering it only because it looks like it's going to be a good card. Um, I'll make sure to put my prelim picks in the description side. Those of you that have um, eye on television, I guess they're not showing this on Spike this time around, uh, there should be at least two, if not three, compelling fights for that, so make sure you check that out. So let's work our way from the bottom of the main card up to the top like I normally do. Takanori Gomi versus Clay Guida. Um, Gomi, well known for his um, superstardom in Japanese MMA, uh, at one time was considered at least two to three years ago as one of the top ten lightweights in the world. Uh, back in 05 and 04, he was considered, if not the number one lightweight, uh, but one of the number one lightweights. Um, really has shown a deficiency as of late, though, um, with his camps. And that's something that a lot of people point to with Gomi's um, downturn before getting into the UFC, that he wasn't taking training seriously. He wasn't um, going around and mixing camps up and trying to add different elements, which is something that we're slowly starting to see Gomi do now, which, unfortunately, it's a question of, is it too little, too late? Um, Gomi, for this camp, has been at, at AKA um, for several weeks, then went back over to Japan. Um, those of you who are not familiar with Gomi, he's a very good wrestler, um, good hands. He's got you know an unorthodox style. He likes to wing punches. He's got a dangerous right hook and a nasty left uppercut. Loves to throw body shots. Uh, throws the occasional leg kicks to throw his opponents off. Um, he's going to have a tough test with Clay Guida. Clay Guida is one of the um, tougher guys at lightweight in the world when it comes to cardio. You can put him up there with uh, Michihiro Ishida, um, Gilbert Melendez, Sean Shirk, uh, Frankie Eggers, another example. Guys like that that just have cardio for days. Clay Guida is one of those individuals, and he's really improved as of late since getting in with Greg Jackson. We've seen an improvement with his boxing, with his transition from wrestling uh, to striking and clinch situations, having better game plans. And overall, it looks like Clay is in a better place uh, mentally. Uh, not that he necessarily wasn't before, but more so now than he has been in the past. So this is an interesting fight stylistically because Gomi has the more technical striking, but has uh, a deficiency where Clay Guida has a strength, and that is in the cardio. Gomi has shown problems with that in the past. Um, you know, go back to Nick Diaz when he fought Nick uh, back at Pride 33. Um, you know, he showed problems there. He's shown problems even more recently. Um, a little bit in the Kenny Florian fight, and even before that, some of his fights uh, before that. So, really, this is a, a fight that comes down to what Gomi do we see and what Clay Guida do we see. And I know that's kind of um, an obvious point, but it, it really does apply to this fight. If Gomi comes in and is technical, can keep the fight standing, and can stay you know, with the rigorous pace that Clay Guida sets, he has a decent you know, chance in this fight to either being more technical and winning a decision or landing that that counter sh you know shot that he likes to throw either with the hook or the uppercut um, but stylistically I think Clay Guida has the advantage here he just he sets a relentless pace I don't know if Gomi at this point even if he does come in in good shape can keep up with Clay Guida's pace I think the Guida will be able to you know mix in his striking and clinch situations and get Gomi down and I think Guida's going to win a unanimous decision so that's going to be my pick all right, on to the next fight, Nate Diaz taking on DHK, Dong Hyun Kim. Nate Diaz, a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, good boxing, decent takedown defense. Has really made it a point to improve in the clinch, um, which is an area where he's had some uh, problems in the past. Um, he admitted it pretty openly after this Joe Stevenson fight. Uh, we saw a little bit of an improvement of that against Marcus Davis when he uh, moved up to 170. And, you know, really the biggest thing that I noticed with... Um, Nate Diaz that tends to be the, the staple point uh, in fights with him is that if he is doing well in the opening frames, he generally looks better and has more confidence. When he's been put into precarious situations, he tends to kind of wilt a little bit. Um, you know, he ran into that against Gray Maynard. He ran into that with Joe Stevenson. You know, and Dong Hyung Kim is going to be a tough test for him. Dong Hyung Kim is a judo black belt, good hands, uh, good kickboxing. Very, very good clinch. He loves to use sweeps and transitions from the clinch position uh, to throw you know, some throws, some trips, some hip tosses to get his opponents down. If Diaz can keep the separation, use his, his boxing and use his unorthodox style to kind of throw DHK's timing off from closing the distance and creating clinch situations, Diaz has um, 
you know, an advantage, I think, a little bit in the boxing, uh, per se. But I really think the DHK is going to be able to close the distance. He uses good footwork and good leg kicks. Um, if he's able to, cl you know, close the distance and clinch with Diaz, I think he can get him down and stay out of subs. And that's going to be my pick. I think DHK will be able to do that um, and get dominant position on the top, stay out of, you know, precarious uh, positions when Diaz... Um, within the, uh, the open guard or enclosed guard with Diaz and be able to get to a dominant position, either half guard or side control. I think DHK wins a UD in this one, so that's going to be my pick. All right, on to the next fight, Tiago Silva versus Brandon Vera. Tiago Silva, black belt, BJJ, uh, good boxing. Primarily his, his BJJ, it's the best with his top game. He's not um, uh, the slickest off of his back, although he does use his grappling to get back to his feet. Um, you know, he has shown some improvements overall with his footwork uh, and with a little bit of his wrestling. Uh, this is an interesting fight where he's taking on Brandon Vera. Um, Vera, since his move down to 205, has been mediocre, um, has been off and on. You really don't know what you're going to get out of him. He's come in in some fights in really good shape and other fights not so good with his cardio and even how he's looked at the weigh-ins. Um, he's a talented Muay Thai practitioner, good Greco-Roman background, um, Brown Belt and BJJ, if I remember right, you know he's you know pretty crafty with his top game, and he's pretty good off of his back as well. Um, you know it, this really comes down to which Brandon Vera shows up to really dictate how this fight goes. If he comes in and is technical and has good footwork, um, he's the quicker of the two guys. He can move in and out of the pocket pretty effectively. But again, it, it depends on what we see out of Brandon Vera. Um, Tiago Silva has very very good counter. Uh, counter uh, boxing. He's you know very well set up in the pocket with his footwork. Um, if Vera comes in very sluggish, you know that could be a problem. Silva may be able to capitalize on that. Um, Vera has been known to be a slow starter in the beginning of fights, so we'll see how that plays out. My pick, though, even though I think Brandon Vera may not come in in the best shape, I think he's the more well-rounded fighter in this one. I think he can put Silva in some precarious situations. Uh, as well as be able to hold his own uh, in the pocket, throw some leg kicks, throw uh, Silva's timing off there. And I think that Vera will more than likely win a decision in this one. Um, a lot of decisions, it seems like, might be uh, on the route for this card. But anyways, uh, I'm going to take Brandon Vera via a unanimous decision. I think he'll be able to do enough in at least two of the three rounds uh, with uh, some leg kicks, uh, superior um, striking overall, and some clinch situations possibly getting Silva down uh, to win the UD. All right, on to the next fight. Uh, Chris Lieben taking on Brian Stan. This one should be fireworks. Both guys have been saying that they're going to stand in exchange. We'll see how well that plays out. Um, Lieben is on a pretty good win streak. Uh, his last win, of course, was over Akiyama, pulling off that incredible triangle choke that many did not expect happening. Um, you know, has been in a, a better place with his camp, um, Overall, he seems to be, you know, doing better with um, the cardio aspect. He's tried to stay away from the bad elements that he's admitted that he's been with in the past. And Brian Stan is a credible opponent. Brian Stan has good boxing, um, decent takedown defense. He's an okay grappler on the ground. Uh, both of these guys are going to try to exchange. Um, Stan may be the more technical striker of the two, while Lieben may be more of the slugger. Um, however, if Stan gets caught into an exchange, which he has done um, in the past. You know, Steve Cantwell kind of baited Brian Stan into an exchange um, in one of their earlier fights. And Lieben has a tendency of doing that with guys, where he gets tagged and he kind of, you know, catches them off guard and the guy feels like he's got to rush in a little bit more and try to throw some more combinations to try to hurt uh, Lieben. But if Stan gets into that type of an exchange, Lieben is the guy that usually lands that shot. The one shot that he may be losing the exchange, but just gets that one nasty either left hook or right um, right straight that he likes to throw and just drops a guy. So, you know, in this fight, if Stan is more technical, doesn't get baited into the exchanges, he has an opportunity to maybe catch Lieben or, you know, outstrike him uh, in at least two of not, you know, all of the rounds. But I think... From what Stan has shown in the past, that he gets sucked into exchanges for whatever reason, um, when he, he thinks that he's gotten a guy hurt and he's gotten caught that way um, by either being knocked out or being clipped and then hasn't looked the same throughout the rest of the fight. So I'm going to go with Lieben in this one. 
I think Chris Lieben will be able to catch Brian Stan coming in, being a little overzealous, and catch him with a knockout. That's going to be my pick. I'm going to say second-round KO for Chris Lieben. All right, on to the main event. Um, Frankie Edgar versus Gray Maynard for the lightweight championship. This is an interesting one. Uh, of course, a rematch. Both these guys have fought each other previously, with Gray Maynard winning the first uh, frame via a UD. Uh, both of these guys have really evolved since they fought the last time. Edgar um, has improved with his footwork. He's looked a lot better with his boxing and transitioning his boxing to his wrestling, something that wasn't as fluid as some of his earlier fights, even against Gray Maynard. Um, you know, he's looked a lot better on the ground with his grappling, being able to get back to his feet. We've seen that as well. He did that against Sean Shirk. And, you know, Maynard in his own right has improved as well with his boxing and his, his clinch positioning of being able to get in inside of guys, kind of work them a little bit, um, a Randy Couture type of strategy, and then making them wilt and taking them down. Um, and then has improved with his technical boxing. So both of these guys are very similar in their skill sets. They're both very, very talented wrestlers. They both have good boxing, but I really think that the footwork element in this fight will be the biggest key factor, and Edgar has the advantage there, I think. Um, Edgar in the first fight was getting a little too overzealous in exchanging with Maynard and moving in and allowing Maynard to capitalize off of Edgar moving into the pocket and being able to take him down. I don't think Edgar's going to make that same mistake in this fight. I think he's going to keep his distance, use his footwork, use some leg kicks, use the jab, work side to side, make Maynard have to come to him, and that's going to be the difference. Instead of Edgar moving to Maynard, Maynard coming to Edgar, I think will be the difference in this fight. And if that's the case, I think Edgar's going to have the advantage in the striking and may even be able to get Maynard down a few times. Um, I don't see a stoppage for either one of these guys in this fight, but I think that Frankie Edgar will be able to do enough in at least three rounds. If not, I'm going to say he takes at least four in this fight. I think Maynard will take a round. Um, at least, but I think Edgar will do enough to take at least three or four to win a unanimous decision here. I just think he's going to come in with a better game plan, um, better footwork overall, which I think is going to be something that Maynard may not be uh, well set up for. He has shown an improvement with his boxing and, and the technical aspects, but Edgar, by moving side to side like that, and you saw that with BJ Penn, it throws your timing off so much, even with boxing and even with trying to look possibly for a takedown. If Maynard's having to constantly think and Edgar is throwing his timing off with the jab, moving side to side, throwing the leg kick, it's going to be very difficult for Maynard to try to key off or time with his own combinations and even looking for the takedown. So that's going to be my pick. I think Frankie Edgar will be able to do that and win via a unanimous decision. So those are my picks for UFC 125 uh, resolution. Let me know what you think. Uh, I will be back uh, the night of or the night after to do a review for this one. I'll be make sure to uh, put my prelim picks over in the description side. And uh, you guys, take it easy and Happy New Year. And I'll be back to do my um, year-end awards video probably on Friday. So you guys take it easy.